Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I have some fun crafts for you today. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on some farmhouse style Easter decor. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, I have a lot of fabrics here, but you really only need like a base, some leaves and florals. You can do it in like three fabrics or four <laughs> once I show you everything. So my base pillow fabrics, what I always use, this is Waverly brand from Walmart, 100% cotton. It's like a cream color, kind of really thick like a duck cloth, okay? And then this is just a, you know, a cotton print also from Walmart. As usual, you know, I'm going to be using some batting to add some extra thickness, you know, like a little bit of a quilted look. You can get that from Walmart as well by the yard or in a bag. Both of these came from Walmart. I just want to use two different color greens here for some leaves and a stem. And then I chose three fabrics for floral. Both of these top two came from Hobby Lobby. This bottom one, actually, I found a really inexpensive sheet set off of eBay because I was trying to find a floral that I liked, a small print. So this is a pillowcase I'm cutting up. It works perfectly for some fabric, right? And in these two, I think the corduroy came from Hobby Lobby, and this is just some material, like a grain sack material, again, I bought off eBay. All right, so I will have a free printable for you. Link to my blog will be in the description box for all the printables today. This talks what you need for the main pillow size, which is 15 by 15, a secondary fabric if you want that, 13 by 13, optional to cut batting, and a third fabric for scripture verse that we'll be using. And then I just drawn, hand drawn some pieces here, a heart shape we're going to be using for flower petals, a stem, a leaf, and two center pieces. You could just use one if you want optional you can definitely cut batting for all of them as well again link will be in my description box to my blog for this printable so i've got my pillow base pre-cut again 15 by 15 all right two pieces i've got a top piece because i wanted a secondary fabric 13 by 13 and i cut two pieces because it's kind of thin but you only need one and then i cut two pieces of batting and then for each of my heart shapes I cut out two pieces of fabric and two pieces of batting for thickness, okay? I wanted it to look really thick and quilty. And then again, I cut two different pieces for circle. The corduroy is a kind of a thick material, so I just cut one of that and two batting. And then again, this kind of grain sack material, I just did one and one. Then the stem, again, see, it's kind of wonky. It's all hand cut. Two pieces of material again because that's the way I want it and one piece of batting because I want it thick but not too thick I want it to look more in the background the leaf I went with two pieces of material again you only really need one two pieces of batting and I designed it so it kind of fits right in the curve of that stem okay and then here's the two pieces of batting for the scripture now I have a free printable for you on the scripture um, I printed mine onto fabric from my inkjet printer in that blog link, there will be a link how to print onto fabric from an inkjet printer. Until about two or three days ago, maybe a week, <laughs> it's quite a span, isn't it? I didn't know if it worked with a laser printer, but I had a really sweet subscriber email me and she told me it did work. Now hers printed a little bit light, so she ran it through twice, but it didn't smudge, it didn't smear, so it should work with your laser printer as well. So back to the main pillow design, if you don't want to use batting, you just want to use a secondary fabric on top, all right, you can take that batting out and if you're a gluer, go ahead and just glue that secondary material on top. If you're a sewer, you can go ahead and sew that material on top to the top layer only. If you want to use batting and all that, and you're a sewer, I'm not going to sew it down first because it's going to be too thick because I want to sew all my other pieces here down as well. And with all the batting on those, it's it's just too thick. Okay, but if you're not using the batting and all that and you're a sewer, you can, you know, sew down your first layer onto your first main fabric piece and then you can sew the other pieces on as well. But I'm doing it off of that main fabric piece of the pillow because it's going to just be too thick. So now what I'm doing, if you are a gluer, I'm just kind of spot gluing everything together here because I'm going to take it all the sewing machine. Spot gluing is easier. I don't have to pin it all, right? But if you're a gluer, go ahead and glue it all together normally. However, you're doing it, if you're adding batting and all that, glue all your pieces together really well. 
I'll just go ahead and do all the rest off camera here. And then what I'm gonna do is cut down my quote to size. Yes, I'm peeling it off of the paper, but again, watch the video if you, you know, haven't done this before. Using my rotary cutter to just, you know, get it to the size I want, which is four and a half by five and a half. And then I'm just pulling on the fabric strings around it just to give it a little bit of a frayed edge so it's not so nice and neat. And then I'll spot glue that as well. And then next we'll get our pieces all into position on that secondary fabric, that brown fabric. Sewers, watch kind of where you lay things because if you're going to sew around the perimeter and sew it onto your first fabric, I'm giving myself about an inch room around my pieces so I have plenty of room to sew around the edge of that fabric there okay now these two pieces i'm just going to sew by hand you know not by hand i'm going to sew it with the sewing machine and then just glue it on top of that flower because uh, you know otherwise it just gets really thick with my machine you know it's it's just too thick to sew all those layers now we're just moving into just showing you a little bit of the sewing here now if you're a gluer even if you're a sewer, maybe you want to you know obviously gluer glue it all down sewers glue it all down but do some hand sewing with some cute even just straight stitches and add those around it and give it a cute country look that way you don't necessarily have to use the sewing machine obviously to add stitches around it i went back and forth whether i wanted to do some hand stitching on it kind of like we did in our last video um, and i'll have a link down to my easter playlist if you missed that video it'll be in my description box and so here it is those sewn i left my edge of my stem hanging off a little bit because I thought it was a little bit fun. Now what I'm going to do is start adding my petals. I'm just going to kind of spot glue those down. Gluers, you're just gluing everything down into position. All right. I'll go ahead and spot glue down the scripture here and of course take it to the sewing machine. Now I know the scripture isn't the normal you know, scriptures we see for Easter, he is risen, that kind of thing. But to me, it's still a scripture. To me, it still represents Easter. It's beautiful. It represents new hope. And, you know, that's what Easter is about, right? Part of it. So here I am all done and ready to go. And we're going to add our secondary piece onto our fabric. Going to go ahead and sew that on. Gluers, you're sitting here waiting, right? Because you're all done. You've glued all this down. You've glued your flower portions and everything down. So we're just going to get that little bit of sewing in there. If you let your stem hang off a little bit make sure you lift that up to sew under it don't sew over the top if you want now we're going to put the whole thing together and if you're a gluer you're going to come between the two main fabric pieces go all the way around and leave an opening for stuffing if you're a sewer it's going to look like this with our opening for stuffing and then go ahead and stuff it as full as you want it right i'll just show a little bit here because we all know how to stuff a pillow and then gluers and sewers once you've got it stuffed to how you want it either glue it closed or sew it closed and here mine is already done and ready to go by the magic of editing and here's bella for a little bit of what's mom doing all right we're going to go ahead and add the flower center in here i'm going to go glue that on of course she just sits right next to it so make sure i don't glue her tail on in the process and then i left a space open here for a little twine bow if you don't want a bow you could totally add another petal there and add like a bow in the center of the flower right but i wanted it down below that center of the flower so i'm going to go ahead and glue that on and that makes this project complete Let's move on to project number two. This project is quick and easy, but I think it makes a statement. I'm using this eight by eight board I found at a thrift store for a dollar. Any eight by eight size or however big you want it will work. And a couple of these uh, chunky slat boards from Dollar Tree. You could use the thin slat boards if you want or something like this as well from Dollar Tree and cut it up. 
anything will work if you want to do the look I'm doing. What I'm going to do is just cut the length so it only hangs off about a quarter inch off each side of the bigger board. I'm going to use my Viver mini table saw for this. I'm not going to show it. I showed it in my last video. Again, that'll be in my description box on my Easter playlist link, but I love it, that mini table saw. And I'll go ahead, cut that and sand it, get it ready to go. So here it is all ready. I'm going to use my hard to read Waverly antique wax mixed with water for a very inexpensive stain. And then I will use my uh, Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth. I love to use this Waverly Antique Wax mixed with water for a stain because, what is it, 6 or $7 a jar, and then you add water to it. Stuff goes a long way. It dries really nice. And, you know, depending on the amount of water that you add to it, it can be lighter or darker for your taste. I will sand everything off camera, distress it a little bit, you know, outside with my electric sander. I like to do that. And then on this one, I'm just coming around the edges and the sides. And then I'll do the same on the back around the edges because we're going to cover the center. So here everything is all distressed up, just a slight distressing around the edges of the big sign. And I've already pre-cut some paper to fit front and back. And you can see it's just about, you know, an eighth of an inch shorter than the actual wood itself because I like a little bit of that wood to show. Otherwise, why did I paint it? Now I'm taking my papers to my sewing machine. I do like to sew on them. I just sew on it like it's normal fabric with a size 10 or 11 needle. Just, you know, I use all polyester thread. Cotton will work fine. And just, you know, and I go back and forth from fabric to paper. Doesn't dull my needle or anything like that. If you wanted some stitches on your paper, you could, you know, just make cute little dash lines with a Sharpie marker. Now what I'm doing is I am using my X-Tool M1 machine. I love it. I'll have a link down below to that initial video last year uh, when I got this and I'm just kind of moving my things into position because I want part of my quote to be in wood, of course. So I'm just getting things set up here, let you see the process a little bit. Basically, I created it in my Cricut Design Space then took a picture of it. Then I can upload it into the Xtool design program. I can erase the background and there under the edit, there's a little trace button. I click that, it traces the word for me, and then I have what I need. Now, as you saw, I am cutting three of them out, not because I'm making multiples of these, but because I needed some more wood, so I ordered some off Etsy, a nice pack, it was a good price, but I don't know my density of wood, and I ordered birch, and it's pretty thick, and I haven't quite found the right measurements I need for it to cut all the way through yet, so uh, I make three of them because sometimes it doesn't laser through the word all the way and I'm just trying different ones but this way I make sure at least one will pop out but if you're using normal kind of three millimeter plywood it just cuts through like butter on the first pass so that's on me but that's why I cut three anyway so here I am just using my Waverly wax mixed with water and I'm just doing a little stain on this nice and easy I will distress it a little bit uh, just by hand holding the wood word in my hand because it is, you know, kind of real fragile lettering, but you know, we'll get to that in a minute. And now I'm using my drop cloth paint and I'm just painting this chunky wonky heart. They come in a set of four from craftingwithkimber.com. I'm just using one of the sizes. It comes with like four sizes front and back because you'll see the back a little bit and I want it to look nice and finished off or you might see the back a little bit. I don't know. And here I am just really lightly sanding it. I don't want it over distressed, but I just kind of want to lighten the edges up just a a little bit again holding it in my hand to you know keep it nice and safe as I sand it all right and I already have a paper cut out that I've sewed around for the heart because it was something I was going to use on another project so it's all done for me and as you saw there it's cut just a little bit short as well so you see a little bit of wood around the heart now I'm taking the open end of my scissor blade scraping along the edges of my paper so I get that little bit of a distress look it kind of gives it a little bit of shadowing, so it's going to kind of help it pop up off our wood a little bit. This is optional. You can do it or not do it. It's not a big deal. And then I'm taking that drop cloth mixed with water and the fan paint, fan paint, fan brush, dip it in the paint, wipe off the excess, and I tap the handle of the brush to add some splatters here. Okay, got those done, and I'll bring in my little heart here. And then we're going to move on to the next. So part of my quotes in wood, part of it is in vinyl, okay? I do have a free printable for you. I have a PDF and a PNG. Those of you for electronic cutting machines, you can take the PNG. Those of you with the PDF, if you're using scrapbook paper, download it, 
print it onto your scrapbook paper first, and then cut your scrapbook paper to fit your project. Okay, I've done that many times. It's a nice way to, you know, still get the same quote that I'm using for your project. So I'll go ahead and get my vinyl portion here on to my paper. Right, and then before I do anything, now I'm gonna go ahead and add splatters on this. I wanted to get my vinyl quote on there first before I splattered this top portion. And I'll let that dry for a little bit so it doesn't smear. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue down my papers front and back. Definitely wanna cover that back. Nobody wants to see the big A on the back side, right? Although I thought A1, A for Almighty, right? Almighty God, he's number one. <laughs> there you go. Glue the front on. And then I'll go ahead and use my brayer front and back so I make sure that's nice and secure and kind of spread that glue out a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and glue my papers onto the heart. I did one for the front and the back side. In case the back is seamed, although I don't really think you'll see the back, but just in case. And I do have glue on my woodward. It just took a while to get on there, so I spared you from that. I'm going to set that into position. And then I'm going to use Beacon Quick Grip Glue. I always have to say that slowly or I'll mess it up. To put my you know, front and back little wood pieces on. You could use the Fabri-Tac, it would hold just fine, but I'm gonna go ahead with the Crip, see, now I can't say it, the Quick Grip Glue and get those into position and make sure I've lined it up. Once I get the back piece on, you know, it takes about 10 minutes to like tack and set up and hold and then 24 hours to cure. And I'll use my ruler kind of on the side here and push it to make sure that the, it's all straight. And then it needed a little bit more something. It wasn't quite, the white splatter's not quite showing up for me. So I took black chalk paint mixed with water. You can see I've got the bottom covered up. I don't want any splatters on that. And just kind of adding a little bit more splatters to the front and to the heart. Then I'll go ahead and glue the heart on into position. Nice, easy project. And that makes this project complete. Let's move on to our last project, number three, which I think is my favorite. Again, a lot of fabrics here, but you don't have to have this many. So I've got the back fabric, which is just a quilt. I've been cutting up some muslin fabric from Walmart. These other, and some batting, of course, you know I'm bringing in the batting for a quilted look. And in a bunch of these, like these pink colored fabrics, some are by the yard, some are those fat quarters and this green all from Walmart. And then this is just a plaid from Jubilee Fabrics. I I didn't know if I wanted to use it in the end. I don't use it anyway. I do have a free printable for you, the pattern for this project. Now, this is a half of a pattern, okay? So you'll cut it out. You're going to tape it together, and then you're going to place it on the fold of your fabric. I'll show you here. So you fold your fabric in half. You have a fold. You're going to place it down. You've cut it out, right? Taped it up. And then you're going to cut it like this. And then when you open your fabric, it's like this. You're going to cut two of those. And then I have a third piece to our printable here. It's a bunch of different flowers. You'll, you may only want to use the rolled rose, but I wanted to give you some different options of flowers you could use. So the rolled rose is one, the one in the upper corner is one, this is one, and then two different kind of leaves. I'm going to show you how to make everything so you have lots of choices to make what you want, okay? So for my top layer, I used the quilted fabric, two pieces, and two pieces of batting, okay? And then I wanted kind of a silhouette around it. So I did another layer on the bottom with the muslin, two pieces of fabric, right? And two pieces of batting. So what I did is use my pattern piece. I'll just simulate with the fabric here. And then I cut out about a half inch around that pattern piece to give us our silhouette piece. Now you can do this as a pillow, which is what I'm going to do, or hang a really pretty like crochet up the top and make it like a wall hanging. Anything will work fine. So I have all my pieces cut out. I'm going to do three rolled roses here for sure. I've got this piece and the piece down below for one other flower. 
And I did two pieces of each of all my fabrics because it's really thin fabric from uh, Walmart. And then I've got all my pieces cut for my other flower. My leaves, I cut one of each and one piece of batting. And then these are the other leaves I cut out, okay? So if you're a gluer, you can go ahead and you're using batting, you can go ahead and this top layer, if you do it like I'm doing it, glue all those pieces together with your batting, okay? Or if you just want like just fabric on top, go ahead and glue that down to your top layer of your silhouette, Okay, I'm going to sew around it, okay, and then glue it on, all right? Again, doing it like a pillow. So if you're a gluer and you use batting in the middle, go ahead and glue your two pieces of batting to your each of your pieces silhouette, but don't glue those two pieces together. You're just gluing your batting to each side of your fabric, okay? I'm going to glue, spot glue my top cross, so to speak, all together. Again, two layers of fabric, two layers of batting, and then I'm gluing each batting to my each side of my fabric of my silhouette cross on the lower piece. And then here I am just, and I hope that was all understandable as I say it, I'm like, did I say it right? <laughs> and then here I am just, of course, sewing my top cross together. Now you're asking why didn't you just sew it to the silhouette because I want it on top and then glue it down so it looks a little bit more poofier to me. If you sew it all together it's really going to scrunch it down and I wanted it more poofy. All right so that's just my reasoning for it. You can certainly sew it all down together. You could hand stitch it together again to give it a little bit more of a country look however you want to do it. And this cross we're sewing completely together. This is what it looks like. All right, and now I'm just taking my batting pieces and gluing it to each piece of my leaf. Again, if you just cut one fabric a leaf, you can just cut one batting, and I'm going to sew down the center of each of them. But again, my fabric's kind of thin, so I'm sandwiching a batting between two pieces of fabric, and I'll do all the rest off camera and sew it down off camera. Here's what it looks like. And now I want to add a little more definition. So I've got some inks, scrapbooking inks that match the fabrics I'm going to be using here. And I'm just going to ink around the edges of all my pieces. So if you can see here on camera on the left, how it just added a little bit of color and dimension versus the one on the right. So I'm going to do it front and back on all my pieces here. And I'll do it on my uh, flower petals and other leaves and everything that's over there to the right. Okay, everything is ready to go. This leaf, I'm going to just sew down the center of it. I'm not going to add any batting. I'll do that off camera. All right. And now we've done the rolled rows before. We did it in our egg video. Remember that one? So, but I'm going to show you again. So this is a five inch diameter circle. You can go as thick or as thin as you want. And you're just going to cut it all the way down, starting very thin, getting wider as you go all the way down to the center, leaving just, you know, a little one inch little kind of circle left there to glue everything to. Now it's kind of all rolled back up into its little swirl there and I'm just inking it and I'll ink it front and back. Since I used two fabrics, I went ahead off camera and kind of glued those fabrics together. All right, it just adds a little dimension here with the inking. You're gonna take some tweezers, all right? And you're gonna make sure this one edge is straight, the edge toward the handle of the tweezers as much as possible. The top, you're gonna see it kind of look a little wonky, but the top, try to keep it as you wind it kind of even at the bottom toward the handle. See how the top, you can kind of see the layers, but the bottom's looking kind of even. Much as you can, it, it's not gonna make a big difference if it's off a little bit. And then lay it on that bottom little circle you have left, and then begin to kind of unravel your rows a little bit, all right? You can make it as loose or as tight as you want. And what I do is kind of slide it off the table there to keep it together, Add glue all into that center cut and especially, you know, in the middle, making sure I got that little middle section there. And I lay that piece over that and then smush it down. And this is what you come up with. All right, I've got three done. Let's move on to our next flower. You're going to take that little rectangle and you're going to make little slits down about two half inch, quarter inch. You're not going to cut it all the way down to the end, just little slits. Again, I'm just showing different varieties so you can choose what you want. And then you're going to glue it and roll it all up together. Okay? Just like that. This is going to be our little flower stamen. All right? My bottom piece, the flower itself, which is the little four-petal flower coming up, I went ahead and sewed around it. You don't have to. It's just, you know, optional. And I'm going to cut about a half-inch slit more in the center. Because what we want to do is layer one petal over the other like this. Nice and easy. I tried to choose easy flowers, too. So you add a little glue on one end on the back side like this, and you'll layer over the petal in the front of it. 
okay? And when you're done, you're going to have a little cup flour, right? And then I'm going to cut that stamen down a little bit. It's a little tall. I'm going to add a little glue and place it in the center of that. And this is what we end up with. Nice and easy. It'll look cute when it's all together, promise. Next flower, you have one circle and nine to 12 little heart-shaped petals, all right? However many you want. I'm taking that circle and I'm cutting it into kind of like a shell shape. You don't have to, but it's easier for me to roll it because you basically are just going to glue it and roll it up in the center, I'm using some tweezers to help me to make a little flower stamen. That's all you're doing. So you don't have to cut it if you don't want to, but for me, it was easier. And I've got all my petals pre-glued at the bottom, and you're just going to take one petal and wrap it around that flower stamen. All right, now the open end where it's not wrapped, you're going to add the other petal, and you're going to close that end up. And I'm pinching it at the bottom as I go. And then you're going to alternate your petals in between the spaces of the petals you just glued. And you're going to continue in that fashion all the way around, adding your petals. And it's just going to give us a nice little open rose. You don't have to pinch it at the bottom, but I am because I'm going to slide it in under those uh, rolled roses just to give us a little dimension. So this is what it looks like, all nice and pinched up, open, just something different. Now these, I didn't end up using them, but I wanted to give you an option. I've pre-added some glue into the points of the petals here, a little thin piece of like 22 gauge wire, and I'm going to wrap that first leaf right at the top. And I'm going to take that second leaf and wrap it right at the opposite end of that first leaf. And I'm going to go back and forth wrapping each leaf opposite of the other leaf. And so you kind of end up with like a little leaf bouquet here. So I hope that's understandable. Now you just kind of decide where you want your flowers and stuff. You can see how I'm arranging them here. I ended up, as I thought, not going with the, with the checkered leaves. I decided I didn't like the color. I'm using four of the green leaves and all three rolled roses. I liked that look best. And then I'm just going to use the other two roses we made. And I'm not going to use the little leaf stem or anything, but I wanted to show you all how to make it, of course. You're welcome to use the design how I laid it out. And of course, do it how you want it. Now I'm taking our open rose. This is why I pinched it so I can add a little glue and glue it right underneath sideways under that rolled rose. Then I'm going to take our little cup rose, as I'm going to call it, glue it up here at the top. And this is all I'm going to do. I love how it turned out. Now, these are art stones. We use them in the scrapbooking world. They're art ingredient art stones. I'll have a link down below. You can find them. I believe you can find them in store at Michael's, but you definitely can order them. All right. They look like little stones, but they're, they have no weight to them whatsoever. And this is just optional. It's just to provide texture. You can use lots of mixed media glues out there, but I'm just going to do my Fabri-Tac glue. And as you can see, where I glue it, I pour a bunch on in the spot. It's easiest to do it that way. It's not going to look like that when it's done. It's just easier to kind of dump them on and, you know, that way and then kind of press them there. And then what sticks will stick. And I add it everywhere onto flowers, leaves, whatever. Then I can just turn it over and dump off the excess. Now we're going to go to the bottom of our cross. If you're a gluer, you're going to go in between the fabrics around the edges, whether or not using batting, gluing it all the way around, but leave a spot for stuffing. If you're a sewer, you can do the same thing, just like we did on our first project. I want to add a little bit of detailing with my crochet thread, a needle, and a blanket stitch. I'm going to show doing the process a little bit, but I'm not going to particularly explain it because in the description box that link to my blog with all those pdfs and pngs and patterns and link to how to print onto fabric using inkjet printer is going to be a link to a video on basic sewing stitches and at the end of that video teaches this process in a nice slower pace for you so i'm going to do this all the way around leaving an opening for stuffing right so here it is done and ready to go it looks really cute it's going to give us that little bit of texture you can do just straight stitches around you don't have to do this blanket stitch i've got my needle still on my thread because once i stuff it here as full as i want it i've got to you know close that opening of course finishing off with that blanket stitch but yes straight stitches around it would look super cute all right, so here it is all the way done. And then the last thing we need to do is just glue our portion on top. Now, whether you're a gluer or a sewer, I have lines to go by. I'm making sure that I don't add any glue beyond the line that I sewed. So I'm basically leaving a half inch border there. That way, when I squish it down and I can squish it down around those sew lines, it'll allow that border to kind of pop up 
and you know just make it look like we sewed it onto that silhouette and give us a nice quilty look once i do that i know those stones kind of give it some fun texture huh that makes this project complete So I hope you enjoyed all of these projects today. I think maybe this one is my favorite, but leave me a comment down below and let me know how you liked all these projects. And well, you know, maybe, I know it's a little bit different, but maybe mention which one <laughs> is your favorite. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you walked in here for the first time, you're just checking things out, you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Discovering your self-worth is not based on impressive accomplishments or how many rewards you receive for a job well done. Discovering your identity doesn't depend on these things either, but often when going through a certain circumstance, you may seek one or even both out depending on the situation. The word identity means the characteristics determining who a person is. The word characteristics means a special quality belonging to an individual. The origin of this word in Greek means a stamping tool. According to the Greek language, your identity has been stamped by a tool. A tool is an instrument you hold in your hands to do a particular kind of work. God held this tool when he formed you. He gave you an identity with a distinguishing feature, an attribute that he stamped upon your heart and life. So in essence, the special attribute is what your self-worth is all about. It's truly discovering that it's not what you do. Your worth is valuable because of where it comes from. Your worth is in God, and it's God whose opinion matters. Don't allow your worth and identity to be judged by another person. People have flaws, and most often they will judge you based on their own flaws. Allow your worth to come from the hand that stamped it upon your heart. God believes you are special. You are a gift made from His grace and love. In the Bible, the book of Psalms, chapter 139 and verse 14, it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. God's work is wonderful. Know that it's powerful, full of beauty and full of compassion for you. Don't allow the enemy to see the door slightly ajar where he can get a foothold into your thoughts and feed you his lies of deception, making you feel worthless or unloved. Turn on God's light and shut the door. Feel that imprint on your heart. Feel God's unconditional acceptance of you. Feel his love and feel his blessing on your life. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what you've done. And it especially doesn't matter what anybody else has said about you or about your worth or about your identity. You were made by God and you are loved by God. No matter what comes your way, you are a righteous oak planted in his strength and in his stability. This is what you focus on. This is what you set your thoughts on. This is who God made you to be. And no one can take that away from you without your permission. So don't give your permission. Once that door is shut, lock it so the enemy has no entry. Throw away the key and stop searching for your identity or trying to discover what your self-worth is from. Because both of these are found in Jesus. He alone has stamped you with his heart of approval. And this is all that matters because you matter to God. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.